Corey, how do you feel today? Good. Yeah? Yeah. You feel like we're gonna make some serious progress? Yeah, I think so. Like now he's just about got this all drained out, so we got all the rock ready. So now it's just about unloading and just moving back and forward one rock at a time. Yep, cool, bub. Big. Now everybody takes a piece of it, including myself, and we're gonna get this thing in. So who's leading? Jack? Huh? You're in the middle? Yeah. No, no. The tall guys usually go in the middle. The short guys go on the ends because then if the tall guys are on the ends, then the short guys in the middle don't carry anything. It's not true. We need to get these little uh, noodle arms. More things bearings. beefed up a little bit. Okay, so Jack ate his Wheaties this morning. You did eat breakfast, right? You know it's the most yes. important meal of the day? I did. Okay. I had brownies and donuts. Brownies and donuts. Spoken like a true 20 year old. All right, good. Me too. All right, so we are back. Day two, we got everything excavated as you saw later in the video. The white lines delineating the outer perimeter of the pond. We've got our two foot depth and then our three foot depth, which is the interior white line. And that is going to be water depth. So we're establishing water level three inches, the low point of the patio right over here, which is the low point on the project. So the objective today is we're gonna need to get those three plants out, the oak leaf hydrangea, the cornelian cherry, and then the hemlock. Those are gonna come out, that's gonna provide access for us. We have to calf some irrigation heads, and then we can go ahead and start digging and piling all of our dirt up. We're gonna pile dirt up here, as well as fill in over here as well. I believe we'll generate enough dirt with the excavation to be able to support both of our berms for our respective waterfalls. That one is only gonna be about 12 inches tall because that's where our bog sphere area is. And then when we dig the bog, that dirt will also come back over here. So that's the goal. All right, so very exciting parts of the project. The fabric is down, now it's time for that EPDM liner. What makes this so exciting is once the liner's in, then we can start the creative process and start placing the rocks, which is always the funnest part, especially that first drop. It always kind of sets the tone for the project. We are about an hour after lunch. It's time to get this enormous 35 by 50 foot liner in the hole. Now I think the guys are trying to discuss what's the best way to manually, between the five of us, get this enormous piece of liner in. It's not so much that it's big square footage wise, it's just heavy and it's gonna be awkward. So, sounds like they got a plan. They're starting to fold it back onto itself. Now it will be that chain gang approach where everybody takes a piece of it, including myself, and we're gonna get this thing in. So who's leading? Jack, huh, you're in the middle? Yeah. No, no. The tall guys usually go in the middle, the short guys go on the ends because then if the tall guys are on the ends, then the short guys in the middle don't carry anything. It's not true. We need to get these little uh, noodle arms. Little things berries. beefed up a little bit. Okay, so Jack ate his Wheaties this morning. You did eat breakfast, right? You know it's the most yes. important meal of the day? I did. Okay. I had brownies and donuts. Brownies and donuts, spoken like a true 20 year old. All right, good, me too. All right, Papa, Dan, Corey, we ready? All right, I'll take the back, then I can follow and just get butts in the picture. All right, everybody ready? Hold on. Okay, everybody, it is the start of a brand new day, a beautiful day out here in Elmhurst on our Aqua Blue project. We got the liner and fabric in yesterday. Today, we are gonna start slinging boulders and getting a lot of this pond rocked in. We've got about eight to 10 tons of boulders that we brought out yesterday from our shop. Really, really good size boulders as well as the shapes. I love Aqua Blues. A few of the reasons that I love them, one is the unique color that you get in so many of them. They've got almost this rust color buried into the rest of the rock where it's blue, it's gray, it's got some white in there, but more importantly than the color, I love the kind of geometric shapes, the angular shapes of it. Super fun to rock in ponds with them. You've got a variety of shapes where typically with granite, they're all round egg-shaped rocks in one way, shape, or form. But these, they're just, they're triangles, they're wedges, they're these long pancakes that are 10 inches thick. There's some really, really cool shapes and it allows us to stand them up, lay them down, turn them on their side. Just really, really love them and they lock together super well because of their angular nature. I really love working with the stone. It's super heavy. They have sharp corners and edges, which does suck, but the end result is totally worth it in the end. And it's a very contemporary, clean look, especially when it's matching with their gorgeous decor out here for their outdoor living space. You know, they already have this beautiful blue stone patio. It's going to complement the overall space when putting these aqua blues in. A few things we gotta move around and then we're gonna plop that machine right here and be able to set this whole area. We'll probably start at that peninsula and work our way back, chew through this rock. Tomorrow we will bring 
out more rock. So every day we're gonna keep bringing rock out here. We don't wanna overload the site with boulders. It's one of those things that we consider when trying to plan for a job and really kind of strategize how we're gonna move throughout the project and what's going to keep us efficient and keep us moving without locking us in to one certain area. So it's gonna be a challenge to continue to bring rock every day. So it's gonna go a little slow in that aspect, but what we're making up is the ease of maneuverability when having to move this machine. There's some large rocks out here. Even our 304 is going to struggle a little bit. So we need to keep the machine close to when we're putting the boulders in in order to keep everything safe. Just some of those things to consider when working on a project. So we just need to move some stuff around, get that machine close so that some of these 3,000 pound rocks will be able to safely move with minimal effort. And we don't want to keep moving that machine around and about all day long. We want to kind of perch it in one spot, work on an area, and then finish that area and move our way to another part of the pond. Next stop, rocking the pond. This is a very impromptu and interruption to your video. Brian Helfrich and myself are excited to announce the Aquascape Hands-On Academy. And this is the hands-on area right here. This was originally created for the Sandbox Studio for the Aquascape Artists of the Year, but it's gonna be turned into a training academy for all people that wanna be contractors to come and learn with our crew. You're gonna see Chris, our crew, and how they build a one-day pond, and we're gonna show you how to do it in four hours. We're gonna have bleachers over here. People are gonna be able to get inside, get their hands dirty. Besides the 11 by 16 or 8 by 11 whatever yep. we decide to do for the one day pond we're also going to put in fountainscapes and a pondless waterfall come to the aquascape hands-on training academy this winter and work with us in a sandbox actually getting your hands dirty and learning how to have a career with water feeds don't you want to tell them about the other day it's two days the classroom day <laughs> one day is going to be hands-on in the sandbox the other day is going to be how to actually run a water feature business everything you need to know 30 years of experience 26 years at the home building water features designing water features selling water features marketing water features promoting water features everything to do with running a water feature oh, business. You, you said a lot in a short amount of time. We're gonna have yeah. a lot in two days. <laughs> Register, check out the link below. And now, back to the vlog. Everybody, we are back after a couple days. Actually, kind of a little bit of a long weekend out here at our Elmhurst job. We can see Jack behind me. We got a significant amount of rain. I think we've got about three inches over the last 36 to 48 hours of rain. So we've got a little bit of cleanup work to do. We're gonna drain the pond down with all the water, storm water that it collected. But good news is, is it held water. There's no water underneath the liner so we don't have that waterbed kind of feel as we're going to be setting rocks today. We've got Corey and Luis over here digging in where that skimmer box is going to go. We are going to refocus our energy and efforts on rocking in this whole area back in through here including where the skimmer is going. The reason the skimmer is going over there it's almost like a modified intake area because we have the pump vault over here which will house a couple pumps one for the jets one for the bog and then our skimmer is going to hold a four to seven pump that will feed that main waterfall. The reason we put them in a centralized area is so that we don't have the two skimming components or the two pumping components fighting against each other, creating weird cross currents out in the middle of the pond. It wouldn't make sense for us to put the skimmer there and let's say the pump vault over here because that area in between, debris and stuff would collect and get caught not knowing which direction to get pulled in. So we put the skimmer and the pump vault in a relatively similar location or in proximity to each other. Everything is getting drawn from across the pond over into this area and then this will be the maintenance area and we will maintain a walkway probably about a three to three and a half foot walkway between the gazebo and the back edge of the boulders so sue and jackie can get in here and maintain that skimmer box or net out any windblown debris that's collecting in that area but this is going to be the centralized maintenance area of the pond and then of course our bio falls will sit there and then our main biological filter will be the wetland filter that will sit over there with all the spheres and everything over there so really pleased with the progress that we made the other day it's going to be back out after a couple days off and we always have to do a little bit of cleanup and rework after a rain event but i think we're going to be in great shape to make some serious headway today we've got two trucks of stone we've got a handful of rock back over there we're going to relocate the machine over to this area and we're going to set all of this stuff down in here is the goal today and kind of get to that peninsula and then if we hit our benchmark today tomorrow we will refocus again go back over here dig our wetland filter start rocking in this area and get our fountainscape waterfall area worked out so we're hoping we can do it all in one piece of liner. It looks to be possible. We just have to be strategic about how we're placing our rocks, but I'm really pleased with the progress that we've made so far. The other day, we set probably about 10, 11 tons of rock out here, which is decent for only three guys, two and a half guys. So Corey, how do you feel today? Good. 
Yeah? Yeah. You feel like we're gonna make some serious progress? Yeah, I think so. Like now he's just about got this all drained out, so we got all the rock ready, so now it's just about unloading and just moving back and forward one rock at a time. Yep, cool, bud. Awesome, man. So that's the goal for today is get this intake area rocked in. I feel really good about it. The sun is now shining, it's beautiful. The guy's got a box of donuts, courtesy of Greg Woodstock the Pond Guy. So we'll keep everybody caffeinated and sugared up and let's get going. Jack setting one of the final boulders for the day. We got close to where we wanted to be and we used almost all of our rock. Just to give you kind of a visual from inside the pond here. This is where we kind of stopped the other day where we've got this rock sloping in, setting this peninsula over here and then this little cove and then it kicks back out. But I wanted to show you a couple things. So we've got a pump vault sitting over here and that pump vault is dug down so that the bottom part of the vault is nine inches below the deepest part of our pond. And then we put two small aqua blocks which you can barely see the panel right there of the aqua block that's furthest out from the pump vault the idea is is that the pump sitting in the pump vault itself that's going to be feeding our circulation jets as well as our wetland filter the reason we are using a pump that is sitting in the bottom of the pond that's going to be pre-filtered through the aqua blocks through all the cobbles and everything we want to prevent as many solids getting pumped into that wetland filter and our circulation jets which are right here now this is a three-quarter lock line the reason that we want to i guess limit the amount of solids that are being sucked into the pump one the circulation jets from being clogged we are going to really hyper mechanically filter the water that's coming through there not only are we going to use a aqua surge pump on that that has the filter screen on it but we're also pulling from the bottom as we're pulling from the bottom it's being pre-filtered through the aqua blocks through the all of the different cobbles theoretically that will block all that debris from getting sucked into the pump which then then gets kicked over through the jets and the wetland filter. So we're limiting the amount of solids that potentially could clog the jet lines, as well as an excess buildup of solids that's being kicked into the wetland filter itself, which will minimize the amount of cleanouts that we will need to perform onto that wetland filter itself, uh, allowing it to really do its job and we're not overloading the wetland filter. So that's a big reason why we have the skimmer on the pond is to mechanically filter that top water debris gets pulled into one area. And then the water that we're actually pumping into our main biological filter has a lot less solids being kicked into it keeping it more clean for longer and minimizing the amount of cleaning that it's going to need so i hope that makes sense to you guys i want to show you the plumbing and the configuration so we've got our stub of two inch pipe coming out there immediately going to a piece of three inch runs to a t and then there is a manifold right here you can see we've got a two inch ball valve and then this is the line going this way that goes back behind all these rocks over here and goes into or feeds that circulation jet and then this circulation jet right here so we have a two inch t with a two to three quarter reducer bushing in the end of the t and then i have a cap after about an eight nine inch piece of stub of pipe at the very end and what this will do is this will put back pressure and equalize out the two circulation jets most of that water in fact 85 to 90 percent of that water i want going up to the wetland filter so that i can then divide it up there between the three spheres and the wetland filter itself we're just stealing a few hundred gallons for our circulation jets in this area over here. Otherwise, this would be a dead zone in this backwater cove. 